you'll be asked to come forward and then state your name for the record and present his or her, your request. You uh, need to adjust the microphone so that uh, it actually amplifies your voice. With the air conditioning on in here, you really can't hear you without the microphone, and I'm sure we don't want to turn the air conditioning off. Anyone wishing to speak to the proposal will be asked to come forward and voice their opinion. Each side will have 10 minutes to speak. All comments should be about the project to be presented. This is not a venue to air personal grievances or all the things that have happened with this house since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. If you hear the gavel, you are out of order, and if you persist, you'll be removed from the meeting. Once your request is heard and the board's decision is rendered, you may leave the meeting. However, if you have questions for staff, please wait until after the meeting is over, or you may contact staff at the office the following day. Once public testimony and discussion for a particular item are concluded, the members of the board will deliberate and render its decision. Members with a personal or financial interest in any request are required to recuse themselves from voting. All decisions by the Architecture Review Board are final. Any person having a request for a certificate of appropriateness denied by the board may appeal such a denial to the Montgomery County, to, to the Montgomery County City Clerk. Any such appeal should be filed with the city clerk within 30 days of the receipt of the not final notice of the board. We have six members present tonight, and it takes five votes to pass a petition. If you think that looks bad for you because of the number of members present, you can delay your request to the next month. Please let us know if it's time that your, pr your project is announced of your request. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce members of the Architecture Review Board. Cedric Campbell is not here. Elizabeth Brown, Jake Johnson, thank you. Mary Robinson, glad to see you. Mr. Foshi, Mr. Hayden, Hillary Morgan, not here. Katie Williams, and no Kalia Bell either. All right, the land use staff is Christy Anderson, Russell Stringer, not available. Tommy Tyson. And we have back with us our noble secretary. Thank you. <laughs> All right. The first item on the agenda for today is Autumn Lewis, Cloverdale, 1212 Westmoreland Avenue. Autumn, I'm glad you're here. Hello. Hello. Um, well, I'm requesting to add shutters, uh, fixed single wood louvered shutters to the windows of the house at 1212 Westmoreland. Um, I'm proposing that they be black and they're sized appropriately for the shape and size of the windows. Okay. Um, are there any? That's it. Okay. Is, are we any comments from the audience on this project? Ms. Forrester, it's good to see you. Darby Forrester representing the Old Cloverdale Association. Um, the house is built in 86. It's not his historical. Uh, we think the shutters will look good on it. No objection. All right, good. Any other comments? Discussion from the board? No discussion. May I have a? Move to approve as submitted. Second. All, right. All in favor? Go, I think it'll look great on your house. I think so too, thank you so much. All right. And our next project is request for the approval of a front yard fence for the property located at 2310 St. Charles Avenue, Capitol Heights Historic District, Ruben Gonzalez. Hello, good afternoon. You need to speak into the microphone. We can't hear you. Hello and good afternoon. You can take off. Can I take it off for a minute? No one else is around you. Uh, I am requesting permission to erect uh, either a picket fence on the west side of the property, so in that way the children will not be crossing into the neighbor's property and to avoid some issues with the neighbor. I'd rather have a friendly atmosphere. And I suggest either 
uh, and I will paint the fence either color, probably white, or a chain link fence. And I am open to su two suggestions. And uh, also, in the, to get into the AC, I will need to put a little gate that is about 48 inches wide to get into there. It can be the same type of material, picket fence or chain link, either one. Okay. Thank you for your time and your recommendation. Is there any discussion from the audience on this project? Say it again. I was asking if there was anybody else who had anything to say about the project. Board discussion? Well, you, you live in one of the few places where I think a chain link fence is probably the community <clears throat> standard. The, I think it, that would be fine. Yeah. The other fence, I think we'd probably approve too. I may be speaking out of turn, but uh, the chain link fence is something that's common in your neighborhood and would probably last longer with less maintenance than the wooden fence. That whatever someone else can, someone can you recommend with will be fine with me. I, I agree because you have chain link on one side and across the back also. There is chain link uh, in the west, in the south, part of the, I mean on the east, on the south, on the west, and also just need a section where the children jump mm -hmm. to the neighbors. Right. And I don't want, I am a fighter. I don't want to be fighting with nobody. I understand. <laughs> uh, I'm, I believe because of the other chain link, chain link would be consistent, it would yeah. blend in, so. All right. Any other comments? May I have a motion? Move to approve uh, petitioner's request to install a chain link fence to his property. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? All right. It's approved. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank Bye. you. All right. We have. Uh, 48 South Capitol Parkway, uh, Capitol Heights, Capitol Parkway. Avery Borntrager, is that correct? Well, I'm his wife because he was deployed Saturday to Oregon along with the National Guard because they are out of control with COVID. All right. So, he is wanting to um, replace the, the concrete, I guess they're original, the tiles, I'll call them concrete tiles. Um, that is in the walkway. That white is showing us her. As you can see, it's they're all busted up. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. My mail lady has tripped a couple of times, my UPS man, my FedEx man. I had the city replace the sidewalk out front, but they don't have these kind of the small tiles mm -hmm. anymore. So we, he found those mm -hmm. that would not mm -hmm. like be a eyesore or whatever. Um, he's not gonna lengthen it. He's not gonna add anything to the width. All he's doing is going to dig those up and put those down. Okay. That's it. Okay. Are there any comments from the audience on this project? From the board? I think it's a great idea, and I move to approve as submitted. Thank Second. you. Second. All in favor? He'll be thrilled. Good. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for you. coming. Is he sitting outside hot now? Probably. All right. Uh, Christy Anderson on behalf of Evelyn Tackett, 1267 Magnolia Curve, Cloverdale. A discussion about window replacement in general. Um, I've met, and, and Ms. Tackett is here this evening. We have had many conversations in the last few years about her windows, which are steel casement and They've gotten to the point where the steel is rusting and expanding. And the photos you have in there with all the blue tape on the panes are ones that are broken that she has marked um, after spending $9,000 on various glass replacement. She had them reglazed and painted. How long ago was that? So you've been here seven years? 2018, um, the the paint doesn't seem to be protecting the steel, so she's looking at replacement. 
Um, you can see from the photos that these are large banks of windows <coughs> all the way around the house. And the, the question was, if she maintains the appearance on the front, would you all consider something with no light configuration on the other three sides, which are not visible from the street? Or do you have other thoughts on that? So we're talking about the replacement with a, a weather shield window? Weather shield window throughout. Okay. Um, in combinations of casements and possibly casements with a fixed um, picture window, because that's what uh -huh. some of them are. Um, as they are now, they don't meet egress requ um, requirements by code because they've got that central metal bar, mm -hmm. so they're not wide enough to exit. And, you know, that may necessitate, you know, a wider casement or double casement to get that opening wide enough from the bedrooms. Um, but she wanted, wanted some feedback before she made application to the board <coughs> regarding the request. Well, having grown up in a house with these windows, I have a lot of sympathy for her because there was always something wrong. And they leaked like a sieve. We had windows like this in my dorm and they sealed up in the winter because the radiator under them produced a, a sheet of ice in the gap. So they, did, they weren't drafty anymore. <laughs> this would not happen in Alabama very often. Well, I, that was not in Alabama, so. <laughs> so my gut reaction is that the divided lights are important to the home. Okay. Whether or not their casement windows doesn't bother me, whether or not their simulated divided lights does not bother me. But I think that grid pattern you see is an important part of the house. Okay. Is there a way to get that same grid pattern with a, uh, just a picture window with simulated divided lights applied, applied moldings to the window? Or is that cost prohibitive at that point? I don't know. I can't remember. You said that there, there was like an S, uh, the cost per pane was like $40 or so per, per light is kind of the ba added on to the base price of the window. So. Yeah. And I know that generally cost is not an issue. We do have a hardship provision if it is, becomes cost prohibitive. But I also think this is going to be an issue moving forward with um, some of our less affluent historic districts. And also, if we want to encourage anyone else to become a historic district, if their windows are going to cost them half the value of their house, they're not going to want to do it. Um, so I, I'm not saying we, we necessarily have to be resolved, but I think it's a conversation we need to have. Has the homeowner priced one large window or are there individual, yes. yeah, individual units that make up a larger window um, with like a mutt in between them? I would think it's three individual units and then the cost of the business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hang on. And I wouldn't mind seeing that. You're talking about taking that's three. That's kind of what they have currently. Let me, I, I do have what um, Southern mm -hmm. Dash had provided. This looks like um, a lot of steel windows that were available right after World War II were inferior steel. And this looks like that to me. Because you can, I've had home projects, you know, where you had monumental windows. I had a, you know, contractors take them out, they sandblast them, they reputty them, they prime, repine and paint, and they look like new. But this, this doesn't, yeah, this yeah, looks like it's beyond, it looks like new. So, this looks like a lot of welding and stuff like that well, that make it cost prohibitive. I, I mean, I've said on other occasions, we're, we're doing, with, this house is 82 years old, and we deal with homes that are some older, maybe some not so old, but at some point you're going to have, th this problem, it, it has to be rectified, it has to be fixed. And in many cases, we see it with roofs all the time, you know, re-shingle a roof, you can't find it. They don't make it anymore. So, again, I'm, I'm with 
John on this, the biggest, in a case like this and others, uh, how does it look? Is it close to what was was put there in what, 1939? Because I, you know, I, I don't know if you can find or, or replace the window. We've got to do something because this, this, it leaks. She's already spent money. And I know, I, you know we don't consider money, but, it, you know. Well, and one of the things Darby had asked before the meeting is whether or not this would be, I don't want to speak out of turn, but asked about the grid between the glass as an option to give you something that looks like it but would not be as expensive for those non-visible elevations. Um, the only person who will be able to see any of these windows is the next door neighbor and just on the driveway side. I mean, you have got to walk down. No, one, no one's going to see it in the back. Um, I think I've also said if, you know, if I drive by and it looks good, I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm not getting out of my car to walk down the side of the side of the house so what someone may do on the side of the back of their house where I can't see it really doesn't bother me now so if, somebody, I, I if someone else comes in and complaining about it that something was not done right well we may have to address that but you know if uh, again I'm with John uh, mm -hmm. something similar mm -hmm. that As long as it looks similar, especially from, you know, from a distance especially, uh, I don't think people are going to start walking up to windows and thinking that's a replacement. i got to go see it. Although, you know, sometimes. Well, in the, in the front, I mean, the intention is to right. make the front look the same with the possible change of if she changes the, the windows on the sunroom, that she might want them to be a better match to the window in that front living room. Mm -hmm. because they were they were done at different times and they're, they're they're both steel but they don't match visually so that would be really the only tweak on the front mm -hmm. um so really the question was how y'all felt about um trying something else on the other elevations i think a single pane would be a mistake i think it's something that the next owner of the house would look at with a scants. I think it's not um, consistent with historic character of the neighborhood, but as uh, John said, whether or not it's a double hung window or a casement window or whether the, you know, how the muttons are on there, that's less important to me than it, than it more than that's more important to me than that it look like a traditional window than it be exactly like these windows on the back and sides. But the the single pane of glass things always look, you know, they they just always look wrong. <laughs> Would you entertain a double hung sash window as a replacement? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Especially on the sides. Just on the sides and back for sure. Okay. Why, why would a double hung sash window be better, easier? Is it less know. expensive? I don't know. I don't know if it would be. I'm just asking for options for her to explore. <clears throat> One of the issues that she has run into um, now, Southern Sash is doing what we asked them to do and trying to steer people to the right windows in the districts, mm -hmm. which has meant she's had some difficulty getting information on other product options. So that's why we wanted to have the conversation with you this evening so she can go back and possibly ask for other specific information on different window options. And that may mean um, that may mean that there are different windows that they carry that come in double hung that they may not have in casement that would be another alternative for her to explore as well. So if you entertain that on the other elevations, then that, that may open up some, mm -hmm. some doors there. Well, again, my, my concern always, and I understand that it used to be, if we can't see it from the street, it doesn't matter. Now that's kind of changed. Um, certainly, again, the street view is, I think, most important and 
you know, sides are important if they're not quite as perfect as they should be, well, you can only do what you can do. I mean, these, these windows have to be replaced. Right. Because they're not going to get any better. Apparently, uh, she's, at, she's done everything she can and nothing's worked. So. Do you want to add anything? They're saying no. They want to see the division somehow. They, they, they do not want a single pane of glass. They, they want a light configuration in those windows, is what they're saying. Well, contrary to what I said, as I sit here, I think about things. I have had a tax credit project approved by the National Park Service where they put in one big piece of glass and put the mutton configuration that used to be there behind it. Hmm. So that that would be I'd would rather have like a like a storm window. Well, no it was I guess it, I mean it was just one big piece of I mean it was a big window. It didn't look like a a storm window, but it was one big piece of glass and then they put, made they did the mutton configuration and attached them on the rear of the window. Mm -hmm. 